What's up everybody, my name is Dan On, and welcome to Honestly. Today we're reviewing two different laptops from Lenovo, both under the $1,000 mark. This one here is the Legion 5 15 inch, and this over here is the IdeaPad Gaming i3. And what's really cool about this review is that most of the specs are near identical. What's different though is that the Legion is running an AMD CPU, the 4600H, and the IdeaPad Gaming is running the equivalent Intel processor, the i7-10750H. And so not only are we gonna see which one is the superior machine, but I also wanna know which one is the superior processor. Let's get honest. All right, so I messed up here. I swore the IdeaPad Gaming i3 had an NVIDIA 1650 Ti, but it does not. It just has a regular 1650, whereas the Legion has the NVIDIA 1650 Ti. So keep that in mind when it comes to benchmarks, and honestly, it won't matter because one of these laptops is just gonna wipe the other one off the face of the earth. And then some of you guys might be thinking, well, doesn't Lenovo make a Legion Intel version? And you're right, they do, but the problem is that the Intel version has a much higher graphics card and it starts at a higher price point of $1,500, whereas this one, again, is under 1,000. So I figured that these two laptops would be a little bit better of a matchup. Starting with build quality, the Legion 5, it, it blew me away, like a freaking away. It is that good. I couldn't believe, and I still can't believe, this thing costs under $1,000 because I can probably and confidently say this thing has better build quality than probably like 80 to 90% of the laptops out there, Windows laptops out there today. Even though it's all plastic and not metal like some of those unibody machines that cost a crazy amount of money, I would say it, would, it can give it a run for its money even with plastic. First of all, it has this nice matte finish that doesn't pick up fingerprints too crazy. And then on the inside, it uses that, it has like a nice soft touch for your hands. And again, because of that finish, it doesn't pick up fingerprints and sweat very easily at all. You can open the lid with one thumb, which is again, a sign of premiumness. The screen barely has any shake. The keyboard, oh. Oh, oh my, it's a work of art. I mean, the travel is perfect. When you bottom it out, it thuds like a nice thud as opposed to clicky clacky. There's no key shake. I mean, even the trackpad, the trackpad is small and I think it's plastic, but it responds great to all of my maneuvers and touches and feels. The one ding that I would give to this laptop is the keyboard numpad. So the numpad is like a mini numpad and it's right next to the main, main keyboard. And so I found myself hitting like different keys on that side way too often. And I tried using the numpad, but because of the shrunken keys, it was a little bit hard to use as well. I wish they had just done without the numpad. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you want. Maybe you guys desperately need the numpad, but for me personally, I think I could have done without the numpad. Um, now, you compare that with the IdeaPad Gaming i3, and it's a totally different story. So first of all, this has a that classic, really, like kind of glossy plastic here that picks up all the fingerprints. There is no special finish inside, so you can see all of your fingerprints and all the sweat marks when you type on the keyboard. Um, the thing doesn't open with one thumb. Uh, it, the screen has a lot of shake, a lot of flex. The trackpad and the keyboard are identical, except for on the IdeaPad, the letters are blue and then the LED is blue, whereas the Legion, it's white and white. So definitely a little bit more of a gamery aesthetic, but the keyboard is virtually the same. The only thing is the materials used on the bottom of the keyboard, again, are cheaper on the IdeaPad Gaming 3. So because of that, you, when you bottom out, you hear a clicky clacky versus a nice professional, pleasant sounding thud of the Legion. So this thing just feels like a sub thousand dollar machine. I mean, to be fair, it's sub thousand dollars and this is what I expected. This one just far above and beyond exceeded my expectations. If I can put it into perspective, I have a Razer Blade 15, which again is like creme de la creme for build quality of Windows machines. I would be 100% happy switching to this if it was about build quality. I, I really would. I think it's just that good. The Legion isn't what you'd call a thin and light gaming laptop. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger than most thin and light gaming 15 inch laptops out there. But one really unique feature about it is that it's got a big booty. And I've got a love hate relationship with the big booty. Things I love about it is that I believe it contributes heavily to the amazing thermals on this machine, which we'll get to later. And the second thing I love about it is it allows for a much cleaner setup because all the ports, most of the ports have been pushed to behind the laptop. And I've always loved this aesthetic where the charger is behind the laptop where all your USB cables can go behind the laptop. There is one USB on each side of this laptop, again, allowing for things like quick access and ease of access, but for all the stuff that might be more permanent, if you put it down on your desktop, having everything behind it allows for a much cleaner look. 
The reasons I don't love it is because, again, it adds extra bulk. The big booty does add a little extra length, or I don't know, what is this, width to the machine. And secondly, I'm not a huge fan of aesthetic, gamery aesthetics. And I don't think, it's not gamery whatsoever. It's a matte black, it's not colorful, there's no RGB. But when you open it up, it does look spaceshipy. So it kind of has this vibe of gameriness to it. So you won't be able to hide in like a business meeting or something with, with this laptop, unfortunately. Those are the only things I don't love about it. Let me know what you guys think about the big booty. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you gotta have big booty? <laughs> um, the IdeaPad gaming over here, again, is not a thin and light gaming machine. It's pretty bulky and pretty big, but because it doesn't have a big booty, it's smaller than the Legion for sure, but in terms of thickness, it's almost identical. Um, the other thing to note about this is that it's got some like kind of sharper edges here, which add a nice elegant look, but it's not something that I'm a huge fan of. I would much rather prefer a much clean 90 degree angles everywhere, but that's my preference. In terms of ports, the Legion beats out the IdeaPad Gaming with one USB-A 3.1 port on the right side, as well as another USB-A 3.1 on the left, along with a microphone headphone combo jack. And then in the rear of the machine on the booty, there's a proprietary charging port, one USB-A 3.1, a USB-C 3.1, an HDMI 2.0 slot, and an ethernet port as well as a Kensington lock. The IdeaPad Gaming has one USB-A 3.1 on the right side, and the rest are on the left, which include the proprietary charging port, an ethernet cable port, HDMI 2.0, another USB-A 3.1, a USB-C 3.1, and a headphone microphone combo jack. Both of these screens are not great when it comes to brightness, maxing out at only 250 nits, and that's pretty terrible. Essentially what it means is even at max brightness, you won't be able to use these machines under bright light, and especially not under the bright sun. The redeeming factor here is that both of them have a high refresh rate panel of 120 hertz, and when it comes to color accuracy, now, while these scores aren't great, again, keep in mind that this is a budget laptop and instead of a great screen, what you're getting are more cores in your CPU as well as a pretty decent GPU. As for the speakers on these laptops, here's what they sound like at 50 and 100% volume. I will just get pack up, ask for more. I'm gonna keep playing pain strings till they chant encore too. I will just get pack up, ask for more. I'm gonna keep playing pain strings till they chant encore. I will just get pack up, ask for more. I'm gonna keep playing pain strings till they chant encore. I will just get pack up, ask for more. I'm gonna keep playing pain strings till they chant encore. Something important to note is that the IdeaPad Gaming that I received has significant backlight bleed on the top right corner, and I can't tell if that's something common with these machines or if it's. It's just a one-off incident, but I thought you guys should be aware. Okay, now to the interesting stuff. How does AMD's Ryzen 4600H compare with the counterpart, Intel's counterpart, the i7-10750H, and this is where it gets really, really interesting, not in terms of performance, because when it comes to performance, it, it performs exactly as you'd expect. The Intel has higher boost clock on single core processes versus multi-core, and so for single core processes, the Intel outscores the AMD Ryzen 4600H. However, when it comes to multi-thread, the boost clock on the AMD 4600H is higher than the 1070H. And so for multi-core processes, multi-core things and benchmarks, the, the Legion kicks the Intel's butt. But here is where the really interesting part is, and it's that when it comes to thermals, the 4600H kicks the Intel's butt all day long. I, I don't know how else to put it. It's just, it's ridiculous. So. Peak temperature on the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming with the Intel processor was 96 degrees Celsius, whereas the peak temperatures I found on the Legion was about 78 degrees Celsius. And that difference is monstrous. I mean, that is crazy. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, well, it's because of the big booty. It's got, you know, this custom solution here. Yeah, I understand that, and you should really take that into consideration, but something to also consider is that the IdeaPad Gaming, it's not a thin and light gaming machine. It's got some bulk on it, right? So it's not like heat can't dissipate. So just something to keep in mind. Um, when it comes to the GPU, again, the 1650 is a weaker GPU than the 1650 Ti, and yet the peak GPU temperature on the IdeaPad Gaming with the Intel processor was 76 degrees Celsius, whereas on the Legion with the AMD processor, it was only 61 degrees Celsius. And again, that might have to do with the thermal solution, but I really think it has more to do with the fact that the CPU gets so much hotter, causing everything else to get hot within this laptop. Now, all that being said, what does it mean in layman speak? It basically means that you're gonna get better overall performance from the AMD laptop because your boost clock is never gonna fluctuate. And when I was playing games, when I was doing these things, I never saw the clock drop anywhere under 4,000 because the thermal management is just so good. 
It also means that when it comes to longevity, in theory, the AMD laptop is going to last you longer because more heat equals more bad. And so the Lenovo Legion should theoretically last you longer. And the most practical thing for me personally is that when it comes to casual use, meaning that the power plug is out and I'm just using it on the couch, I have noticed that the Legion, first of all, the fans don't spin up nearly as much because again, better thermal management. Whereas on the Intel version, I found it just kind of spinning up, getting randomly warm. I did not experience that at all. So when it comes to casual use, I feel like you're just gonna enjoy the AMD version a little bit better for overall heat on your legs, for fan noise levels and all of that jazz. I feel like it's just a better machine for that kind of use. So when it comes to other gaming benchmarks though, here's what they look like. And again, keep in mind that the AMD, the AMD Legion laptop does have a 1650 Ti, whereas the IdeaPad Gaming only has a 1650. So final thoughts, which one should you pick is not even a question. Uh, I don't even know why Lenovo made this machine. It makes zero sense to me and nobody should buy this, especially when you can buy a Legion for a similar price point. Um, so yeah, that's not even a question. I do think though something to consider is that for your next machine, should you get an Intel, a machine with an Intel CPU or an AMD CPU? And based on these results, I, wow. I mean, I heard AMD was good. I heard their mobile CPUs were good, but Holy crap, I mean, it's just so good. And I get why people are raving about it. And should you decide to pick up the Legion, first of all, I think, again, this is a great, great machine. But secondly, if you're planning on getting something else, consider and maybe search to see if it does have an AMD option or maybe wait out because again, AMD here, it just blew my mind. And I think on any machine you guys wanna pick up, it might be worth waiting to see if AMD decides to slip a CPU in there. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this one. As always, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, share, do what you gotta do. Until next time, everybody, stay safe, and as always, stay honest.